Grizzly Bear Research is where the icon for wild country meets the cutting edge of our high-tech world. Using satellite communication, bear callers like this are able to store and transmit incredible amounts of data. This was the collar that we used to put on the bear that was caught on the west side of Flathead Lake. And it answers the question of how the bear made it from the west side of Flathead Lake to the east side of Flathead Lake, back to its home range. It takes a location every four hours. She swam down to Wild Horse Island, crossed over at Bird Island, and then it took her around 12 hours from swimming from Bird Island to the east shore. Well, we follow between 25 and 30 grizzly bears uh, with our global positioning system, but about every two weeks we still need to get up in the air and go find the bears and see exactly what they're doing. What we're learning about grizzly bears after following so many for the last decade here is that there is no typical grizzly bear. But what we're finding out is that they like lowland habitat. The bears that we followed yesterday are a perfect example. We kept looking to the mountains thinking, why aren't they in the mountains? Why aren't they in the mountains? But the signal kept taking us to the, to the valley bottom. And as we finally zoomed in, we see that these bears are in a cornfield. And it's not a safe place for grizzly bears. The collars transmit a special pulse when they become immobile. Sometimes it means a dead grizzly. But usually it means the preset latch is released and it's time to go retrieve the collar and begin downloading the new data. This is Mike Gurnett, out among Montana's Fish, Wildlife and Parks.